Teaching Live Online Tip 1, Planning for Instruction. Teaching a live online class is a lot like towing a bus full of students that happens to be on fire. What can possibly go wrong? Today's micro training objectives are to review some tips on structuring a course for an online lesson. So some common concerns about teaching live online courses include that it's difficult to create lesson structure in Zoom as opposed to teaching in person, or small group interaction is not possible or even close to the same as face-to-face -face interaction. What if I told you, in case of remote teaching, break class structure? So this means that we really have to think about how is it that we approach uh, instruction. So the big thing is to create structure in daily lessons. So we need to look at the different parts of a lesson, right? We have our objectives and goals, materials and equipment, what your anticipatory set is, meaning like what will they do? Your direct instruction, so you show them what you want them to do. You allow them an opportunity for guided practice. Then you round out what it was that they discussed or what they learned. And then you allow for independent practice. So tip one, creating structure in daily lessons. How to do this effectively? First of all, focus on an active learning best practices based in UDL adult learning theory. Chunk class time for meaningful and active learning opportunities. For example, create a five minute opening warm up. Lead with quick schema building activities to allow for priming the learners' brains and students to interact either via chat, verbally, and or emojis. Then have a 10 to 15 minute mini lecture, but definitely no longer than that. Utilize your Google Shared Drive for students to have access to the lecture and or show where the information can be found in Canvas. Also include a modeled example for students within your mini lecture. Then you you want to provide 15 to 20 minutes for structured practice. This includes breakout rooms, polls, Kahoot, games, Padlet, Jamboard, and also even a wrap-up discussion. After you have done your wrap-up discussion, you want to have 15 plus minutes of independent practice to complete it after the class. So you're reinforcing what students need to complete on their own when they have been given enough information to support their own success. So let's take a look at an online example. So this was a course that was created for Alt 100. And in this course, when students came into the class, they uh, added their first and last name to the chat box. And then they had to uh, talk about what is metacognition. This gave the students an opportunity to um, go through their notes from previous classes and readings that they had had. Then there were little announcements, okay? So those were points, just housekeeping points. Then we did a little review breakout room activity where the students got talking and interacting really quickly. And so they were shown this chart and together in their groups, they had to essentially create that chart. Afterwards, they came back and we collectively filled out this chart. Then we talked about our lesson for the day, a post-reading activity, okay? And then what they did was they practiced and they were given essentially a, a course or a, an instructional um, document to help guide them in that learning process. So when you talk about teaching live online, you can do it quite extensively and you can do it quite thoroughly that allows for very similar interaction for students. And it really brings in that learner to learner experience that many students think that they're not getting. So wait, what if the class is longer than 75 minutes? That's okay. Remember that you're trying to avoid cognitive overload, key term, avoid cognitive overload by scaffolding concepts or chunking information and skills throughout the lecture. So you're constantly building on previous concepts. You introduce a new topic and then you repeat the cycle. A good rule of thumb to keep the learning experience fresh is to add new and different activities every day. Also, this is an opportunity for you to level up your instructional practices 
but also the learning experience for students. Well, and that in a nutshell is exactly how you organize or plan for your instruction. So if you have any further questions, you can email us directly at ctl at southmountaincc.edu or visit us at the Center for Teaching and Learning in the SMCC Library. Thanks for watching.